Hi, it's Nadia from Printables by V and in today's video we will talk about digital planning, how you can use your digital planner and most importantly what you can't do with it. As an owner of a digital planner shop, I often get questions about planners from people who just don't understand what a PDF planner is. So if you're unsure what you can do with your planner, where you can open it, can you sync it with different apps, please keep watching. So let's start with what you can do with a digital planner. You can add text to it, you can write on it using stylus, you can add images and you can add stickers. And stickers are usually just pictures with transparent background. Some apps as GoodNotes allow you to create sticker packs in GoodNotes format and in other apps you will be using PNG stickers. Also, to open a digital planner you need to have some kind of PDF annotation app. The most common are GoodNotes, Notability, Xodo, NoteShelf. And there are hundreds and hundreds of different PDF annotation apps. And because of that, it is sometimes confusing for starters. If you are unsure about what app to choose, it is better to choose the most common one. Because usually there are a lot of tutorials about that app. And if you have some questions, you can ask people who use that app frequently. And if you're interested in the topic of PDF annotation apps, I can make a video explaining the differences between the most common apps. So if you want to see a video like that, please leave a comment below. So what is a digital planner? A digital planner is basically a picture with a lot of hyperlinks. What is a hyperlink? Hyperlink is just a basic link. Think of it as a button in your app. You can click it and it will take you to a specific place. A hyperlink does that in a document. The hyperlinks give you the possibility to create sections in your planner. So you can have a lot of hyperlinks on each page and you don't have to scroll every time you need to go to a specific page. Usually a lot of planners have monthly tabs with hyperlinks or some common tabs with planner templates. Also one important difference between paper and digital planners is that you can copy a digital planner as many times as you want. Quite a lot of people ask me about that if I can reuse my planner. And the answer is yes, you can reuse your digital planner over and over again, obviously if it is undated. And on the topic of hyperlinks, let me mention that you can't change the tabs, the names of the tabs, the links of the tabs, because hyperlinks are created by a designer of a planner. For example, in this case it's me. I have a specific program where I create a digital planner and where I script all the hyperlinks before the planner is saved. And after it is saved it is impossible to change. Of course you can move a page from one place to another and restructure your planner and the links will still work and you will be able to click for example on a monthly tab and it will take you to a monthly planner but you can't change the names of the tab also a lot of people ask me about syncing your planner with a calendar for example google calendar but unfortunately it's not possible because a digital planner is just a picture with links and ask yourself can you sync a picture with a data from a calendar of course not so if you want to add some recurring events to your planner some automatic reminders uh, maybe you should just download a google calendar and use it instead so let's go over some things we've talked about today firstly a digital planner is just a picture with links. You can't change the design, you can't change the color of the planner, you can't change the tabs, their names. 
but you can add text, annotations, images to it and actually in some apps you can even add audio to a page i think you can do it in notability and it is quite a nice addition if you want to take notes while recording a lecture for example also you can sync your planner with a calendar or any other app because it is just a picture with links so I think this is the main information about digital planners that you need to know to get started and to have the realistic expectations when you buy your first digital planner. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comments below and I will try to answer them. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye!